So before you do anything with your debt in YNAB, you need to understand that there are two types of debt. First, there's the type of debt that you're actively using and going to spend from. Like say this Chase credit card where maybe I don't have enough money to pay it off in full, but I'm still actively using it each month as I pay it down. The other type of debt is debt that you're not actively using and you're just trying to pay it down. It's going to be your car loans, your student loans, credit cards you're no longer using, and even a line of credit if you're not actively borrowing from it. And this is important because before you add your debt account into YNAB, you need to answer the question, will I spend from this debt going forward and actually use it for my expenses, or am I just trying to pay this thing down? Now, if you're planning to use your debt and actively spend down from it, uh, then I recommend setting it up and choosing your account type exactly like what YNAB recommends the credit card and the line of credit. I'm not gonna cover that in this video. If you have questions about this, I highly recommend checking out my dedicated YNAB credit card guide, uh, which also works for lines of credits that you're actively using as well. Whereas this video is just gonna be focused on setting up the debt accounts that you are not actively spending from. That being said, there are two ways to go about this. And before I get too far showing you those two methods, I do wanna mention that don't worry if you have set up your debt accounts incorrect and you'd like to change them to what I'm about to show you, just hang tight. I'm going to show you some kind of more advanced YNAB moves towards the end of this video to help you change your account setup and get it corrected. But like I was saying, there are sort of two methods to go about setting these up. Let's start with the first method, which is more the simpler of the two, and it's just going to be adding in your categories. That means for method number one, you don't even have to worry about adding in the specific debt account. You don't have to add in your different loans or your different lines of credit or your mortgage. You don't have to add these in as actual accounts. All you're going to focus on is this debt repayment group. What I recommend doing is setting up a debt repayment group by clicking a new category group, calling it debt repayment or you know debt pay down or debt snowball, whatever you would like to call it. And I keep it right up here near the top because ideally that's kind of one of our biggest focuses, right? We wanna focus on paying this debt down. Then you're gonna click this little plus sign right here next to the debt repayment group and add a category for each debt that you have. You can see that I've got one here for an RV loan, a couple of student loans, a car loan, a city double cash card, and then a line item for credit card interest. Um, but that's really uh, more for the other video about handling on budget credit cards. As you can see, the other thing that I like to do is to add a little structure here by putting in the amount and the due date, right? So $400 on the fifth. Then of course we wanna set goals. You can check out my goal video for that. And we set goals for the minimum payments. Now this is key. You're gonna set goals for the minimum payment or the payment due for each and every debt. You can also then organize these in terms of their due date, which is really helpful for making sure that you're budgeting for everything in the order that it's due if money is really tight right now. I also want to specifically mention and make sure this is going to include a category for those credit cards that you're not actively using. As you can see up here, like normal credit cards, this Chase, Discover, and Amex Gold, these are all over here and YNAB created these automatically for me. But if I have other credit cards that I'm just trying to pay down, like this City Double Cash card, I need to create a category for that. So maybe I have another one that has a visa on it and maybe I have a minimum payment of $25 uh, and maybe it's due on the 21st. So I'm gonna add it in like that, create a goal for 25 and drag that right down here. So the key here with method number one is to set up a category for each and every debt. So this is car loans, personal loans, student loans, lines of credit you're not actively using, RV loans, et cetera, et cetera. Now, some people will also include their mortgage here. That's really just a personal preference. Some people like to include their mortgage down here in like a monthly fixed or a home or a living category. And some people like to include it in debt repayment. It's really up to you and it's a personal preference depending on how you think about your mortgage. Let's say that we wanted to do that in here. Say we have a thousand dollar mortgage on the first, we would add it in just like this here. 
Okay, now before I show you how transactions work when it actually comes time to pay these bills, I do want to mention I've seen one other setup that I really like, uh, especially if you're focused on using something like a debt snowball. And that is instead of using the by due date for the day of the month these are due and organizing them that way, focus on the debt snowball method, right? Which balance is the lowest to the highest and put a little one, two, three, uh, number in front of the category and then reorganize them in order of the debt snowball. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So in this scenario, I'm still using the goals. I've still got the due dates in here, but I'm ordering them top to bottom based on their balances, based on the debt snowball method. And this makes it really nice from the standpoint of as you're using YNAB and you find money in the budget where you're like, oh, I came in a little bit under groceries this month, or we didn't spend as much money as we thought we needed for gas, I'm going to take that extra money and throw it towards my debt. This makes it really easy to keep in mind which debt you're focused on first. Okay, so with that being said, let me show you how to make a transaction or a payment for these, and then we'll move on to the second method for setting these up in YNAB. So the nice thing about method number one is that all of these categories and bills for paying down my debt basically work just like everything else. And so just the same way that I would pay my electric bill or my Spotify or Netflix payment, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the debt repayment. We can see for like the city double cash, I have a $55 goal. I've budgeted $55 to achieve that goal. I haven't spent anything yet and I have $55 available. So that means when it's time for the bill to come through, Either I'm going to add it manually or it's going to import. I'm going to say city payment. The category will be that city double cash. The outflow will be $55 because that's the payment amount. I'll hit save. Of course, our checking account balance goes down. And when I come over here, it's all taken care of. Budget of 55. I spent 55 and now I'm zeroed out. I just treat these debt repayments the same exact way that I would treat any other fixed bill. Okay, so let's talk about method number two. Now, why would you use method number two? Well, method number two is for the type of people who want to see their account balance go down over time. Method number one, I think is great and should be adequate for the vast majority of people. It keeps things really simple, which I like. But if you want to track your balances and you actually want to watch the balances of your debt go down and you want to see that in YNAB, that's who method number two is for. So what do I mean when I say method number two? Well, you're going to do everything you do in method number one, which is you're going to have all this set up just like this. The key difference is now you're going to actually add in your accounts with their respective balances. So I'll come over here. I'll click add account. I'm going to choose unlinked in this example. And the key difference is that whether it's a credit card or a line of credit or not, I don't care. For all of these debts, we've already decided at the outset of this video that we aren't actively using these debts, meaning we only want to pay them down over time. So for all of these, I'm going to choose liability. So let's just start with a visa, right? This is my visa card. And let's say that I currently owe $350. Done. And now it's going to show up right down here. Now let's add another. Add unlinked liability car loan. And let's say that I currently owe 5500 Done. I'll go ahead and speed this up and add the rest of them. Three hours later. Okay, so now I've got them all added in here and they're all added as liabilities down here in the tracking section. You can also see that I've got them organized in our debt snowball method so that they perfectly line up over here, which makes it really easy. I could even come in here if I wanted to and rename them with the exact same numbering scheme to make it even easier to see what's going on. Now that takes care of the initial setup. Now, of course, the next question is, how do you make your payments and what do you do about all that pesky interest? Well, here's the key difference. Remember when we made the payment in the first method, what we did is we essentially had this city payment right here and it went to our category. Well, now the key difference is when we make that city payment, it's not going to be some you know random payee. We're actually going to choose the option that's available to us because this is now a transfer from one account in YNAB to another account in YNAB. And since it's off budget, we're still going to have the same category. So in this case, when my payment comes through and gets imported in, I'm now going to come down here and select this payment to city double cash, which is now going to actually be a transfer. So watch this. You'll see $55 here. And when I do this, you'll see the balance of the city double cash go down by $55. So I'll hit save and now, you'll see that I now only owe 6,045. 
So let's say that I was gonna do the same thing for the RV. This is gonna be a transfer to the RV loan. I'm going to choose the RV loan here. It'll be 400 and I'll hit save and it'll be a transfer. 400 goes down here and now it goes down here and shows up over here as well. So the only difference between method number one and method number two when it comes to making your payments is that it's both a transfer and gets a category. And the reason that it gets a category and is a transfer is because these accounts are in the tracking section. Okay, now there is one last step here to account for interest because you might be looking at this RV loan, for example, and going, hold up, wait a second. If I make a $400 payment to the RV loan or any of these loans for that matter, it's not going to reduce the principal by $400. I'm still gonna have interest in here. What I want you to do is reconcile this account and account for that interest. So you'll go log in online to your actual loan account if it doesn't connect automatically in YNAB and you'll click reconcile and it'll say, hey, is this your current balance? And you'll say, no, it is not. My actual balance is $14,755. So you'll click okay. YNAB will let you know there's a difference. You'll say, yes, I understand. Create adjustment and finish. And now when you click show all, this reconciliation balance adjustment right here that was entered automatically by YNAB that is your interest. So if you really want to, you could just rename that interest and save. And so now you can see that I paid $400, but 155 of that is actually interest and my RV loan balance is perfectly up to date. I don't recommend stressing out about your balances more than once a month. I would just have it sort of, you know, set up as your regular routine that you go in here, you reconcile these accounts once a month to get the balances straight. And if you really want to track balances using method number two. Okay, so that's method number one and method number two, but now you might be saying, okay, but what if I set this up wrong? What if I accidentally created an account on budget that I really want in the tracking section or vice versa? Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just right clicking and saying, move to tracking. There's a few steps in between, but I'm gonna show you how. Let's pretend that I set this Amex Gold card up where I, I don't actually plan on using it. I just want to pay this thing down, so I don't want it on budget. Now, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with having it set up on budget the way that it is right now. You can, you can absolutely do it this way. But if it annoys you or it clutters your wine app or you just want to get it down here in the tracking section, uh, I understand that. So let me walk you through sort of some advanced steps for setting this up. Step number one is to go ahead and unlink the account if you have it linked. In this case, I don't, but if I did have it linked, I would click unlink right here. Step number two is to add the new account in. Before I do anything with the old account, I'm gonna go ahead and add it in. The key here though, is that if you do choose linked, make sure you change the account type to liability, right? So now I'm gonna say MX Gold, give it a new name of new and the current balance, whatever it gets pulled in automatically, doesn't matter, we're gonna delete that in a second anyways. Okay, step number three, come up here to the old account, click all the transactions. That's all of them, which could be a lot, depending on how long you've been using YNAB. We're gonna click edit. Then we're going to click move to account and we're gonna move it to this brand new account that we've just set up. Once this is done, this account should be completely empty, this old account here. That means that you can go ahead, right click on the old account and delete it. Already looking cleaner. Okay, step number four in this whole situation, this is the most complicated. What just happened when you did all this is unfortunately these all are now miscategorized. And you can probably see that up here in the checking. I now have this little white dot up here, which means I've got a bunch of categories now that are messed up. I should be able to just quickly click three new transactions to import, approve, or categorize and find them. And now you'll see what happened. We didn't even have a category for these in the first place. That's because the original payments from this checking to that old account were basically transfers. Well, now because that account is in the tracking section, we need a category. So I need to go back to the budget, go ahead and create a brand new category called Amex Gold, right? Of course, I would do the exact same thing that I did with all these others, give it a goal, give it a date, all that stuff. But first and foremost, what I gotta do is I gotta move these, right? So I can do it all at once, luckily, because I know that they're all the same. So I'm gonna highlight all of them, click edit, come here, click categorize, choose that debt repayment and get that brand new category there. And boom, now I'm good to go. So that's step number four is I need to go find any of the transactions that 
got misplaced and recategorize them to the correct place. Now, I may also have to go back into some previous months. Now, y'all are seeing why I said this kind of more advanced YNAB <laughs> uh, into previous months and, you know, budget for this to kind of play some cleanup. I'm not going to go through all of that in this video, but you can go back into the historical months and play cleanup a little bit uh, if you want to do that. Okay, step number five, this is the last step, is to come back to this brand new account and reconciling it. So we're gonna delete the brand new starting balance that we don't need anymore. We're gonna double check all the transactions that are in here, make sure they look right. We're gonna go log in to our actual account and see what the clear balance is and reconcile it. Of course, if you have any questions on reconciling, be sure to check out my reconciliation video that will show you exactly how to go through this process. Let's say that it is perfectly reconciled. I'll hit yes. This will all turn into locks, and now I'm good to go. Now, if you have any more questions at all about YNAB, be sure to check out my YNAB tutorial playlist and also download my YNAB getting started checklists and other resources using the link down in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.